Outreach. I'm so excited to be here at the Way World Outreach. This is like home away from home. It's so funny is I have the exact pulpit and and so it's like so perfect. It's like, oh Jesus. I'm telling you, I just got lost in worship. They invited me in and they said, sit right here. And I kind of ran to this spot over here. I got probably a little too close to a young lady and she was like, she went a little closer. Maybe that was, I was just pushing her a little deeper. But I'll tell you what, right here, I begin to feel the glory of God. And as I stand here, I could feel a weep come over my heart right now because God wants to do the amazing. He so wants to touch us, grab hold of us and love us. You know, the other day I was talking to the Lord and I had this quick conversation and I said, Lord, why did you give me a dream? I know that sounds like a kind of a funny question to ask him. And he says, because I don't want you to be stuck. Did you know that the word dream in the Hebrew is chalam? And the Hebrew perspective is God didn't give you a dream. It's God hugged you and the dream was revealed. You realize you can't get gel out of a tube unless you squeeze it. So sometimes God has to squeeze you in your darkest of hours to bring forth a revelation that was hidden inside of you. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say these words. I'm going to cause the people of the Way World Outreach to dream again. I'm going to cause you to begin to see what's been locked up and be revealed. And suddenly you're going to grab hold of what tomorrow has. And you won't be fearful of what the world has announced because I will give you a strategy and a plan. You know what the Bible tells me? That God's word gives us a future and a hope. His plans for our life are for good and not of evil. Can I tell you the moment you stop living for God is when evil sets in. If you spell evil from backwards, it spells live. So when you stop living, evil things creep in. Before I take off, I have about four or five words already in my heart for people, but I just wanna say this. I so appreciate Pastor Marco and his lovely wife. I wanna say thank you as they are being refreshed. I pray that God would pour out mightily, that they would come back, not just refreshed, but stirred up and have fresh vision to pour out into all of you. So I honor the set man and woman of God. I bless them for all the staff that's picked me up and taken me around, showed me your kindness and your love. I so appreciate your hospitality. But as I was standing here, the Lord began to speak to me and instantly this young lady on my far right in the white, will you come up here or come over here? I have a word for you. I just, I'm going to start, you right there. She's like, who, me? Yes, you. Couldn't be. Then who? Come here. You could come up. Come up, come up. Everybody want to see you. I'm telling you, right as you get past that speaker, the glory is going to start falling on you. So just lift up your hand. Somebody get ready. Keep walking, keep walking, keep walking, keep walking towards me. It's going to get thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. You're going to feel overwhelmed. But I heard the Spirit of God say these words. The day of anxiety and the moments of fear in your life will be no more. My glory has come to confront it. My goodness shall come upon you, and I shall pour out my mercy and give you strength to go from glory to glory. The Lord says this last six months of your life has been filled with disappointment, but the next 12 months of your life are going to be filled with good news and glory. He said, I'm about to cause the need that you have for your hand. Provision has come this very day. Do not be afraid of what a circumstance looked like, but know that I declared a new day has come. He says, you stepped into my glory. Now raise up your hand. He says, and now 
my glory comes on you. I release you into a brand new day, into a new hour, and into a new moment. My goodness will take you to a high place and cause you to see from above. The day of despair where you feel like you're looking up is over. He says, you will look down. He says, now is the time to spread your wings like an eagle and soar. He says, I will cause you to see from above. You are meant to be the head and not the tail. The enemy has tried to drag you down into low places, but I break the yoke and I let you ascend to the high place. The Lord says, look up for this is where your help comes from. There is none like me. I'm a God of favor and a God of grace and I put grace all over you this day, says the Spirit of the Lord. Come on, someone say yes. There's a young man that has a tie and a bandana. I wrote it down on my phone, bandana man. You right there, will you just stand up? I heard the Spirit of God say, you carry a witness and a testimony that will bring many into the kingdom. You carry the spirit of revival, but even greater, you are a soul winner. For I have called you to be a Joshua to your generation. You are a word of salvation. You are a soul winner. And I am going to anoint you afresh to win many for the kingdom. The Lord says, you put a demand on me and said, God, if you have a call, let the prophet announce it. The Lord says, I have called you to be a testimony and a witness to go into dark places and bring men out of pits and set their feet upon the rock. He says, and I will establish the ways. The Lord says, get ready to go fishing. He says, you're not going to fish with a net because you have a spiritual father. You will understand the process of mending nets. And when you cast out the nets, you will not lose the harvest. God says, get ready. There is many that will come into the kingdom because of you. You are a soul winner. Birth for a time such as this to bring a radical sound to a generation and turn their life around. Come on, if you believe it, say yes. Ah, I'm telling you, something on the inside of me is jumping. See, this young man, his smile just did it. Come here. I heard the Spirit of God say these words. He says, you carry an apostolic presence. There's something inside of you that craves to learn. God said, I'm going to use you to be one that will learn doctrine and foundation and scriptures of truth. And you will be a man that will have the, the, the sword of the spirit, but also the scalpel of a surgeon. You won't dice men and cut them into pieces. He says, you will surgically remove the errors that are in their life. You will surgically remove the places of their dross and their pain. And what you'll do is you'll reveal goodness. The Lord says, I am going to make you a man of great mercy, tender hearted, filled with love. The Lord says, there is a shepherd's presence on you, but the Lord says, you won't fear the giants. The Lord said, I'm raising you up to be one that will bring down giants and cause enemies to fall, but you will have the power to raise up a generation that they will find their shout and go into the city and take their land. God says, be not afraid to be used in this hour. Have I not been waking you up in the midnight hour? Have I not been waking you up to three, four in the morning, and you're not sure why. He says, that's your hour to say, speak, Lord, your servant hears. He says, the spirit of hearing is coming upon you for a day such as this. Come on! Ah, something in me is going on. I'm telling you, there is a person by the name of Patricia Moss. You're watching online. Patricia, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, this is your hour of a great separation. He says, like Zacchaeus, you're going to have a desire to separate yourself from the noise and the crowd, but I am going to cause you to run to a tree and come up to a high place. Zacchaeus didn't just run to a tree. He climbed up. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, I'm going to cause you to ascend to the high places so all the noise that has surrounded your house, your circumstances, Circumstance and your situation will now be beneath you. I will give you clarity to see from above, not beneath. And I will give you clarity in hearing and you will hear what the Spirit is saying. And as you hear my voice, you will find direction, guidance, and peace. For surely the peace of God has come to your situation. The day has changed, light has shined, and a new glory has been revealed. Get ready to ascend to a high place and be victorious, says the Spirit of God. Someone say yes. Somebody up here, I had a glimpse, had a sunflower on their shirt. Somebody had a sunflower over here. Where are you? You were singing. Come up here quickly. Is this okay? I could preach. Prophesy or preach? Okay. 
we're okay. Let's go ahead and give me a little, uh. There you go. <laughs> Did you know, come on, come on, don't be afraid. You're stepping into a brand new day. You're stepping into a brand new moment. You're stepping into an hour of healing and health. I don't know why, but I heard the Lord say, everything that has been in disarray in your body is about to shine in a new way. He said, I'm about to bring peace to your mind and I'm going to bring an end to your worry and torment will be no more. The Lord says, I've heard your cry regarding your family and I'm about to turn their season around. The Lord says, I tell you today that you are a sunflower. A sunflower is down when the skies appear dark. But the Lord says, not only are you a sunflower, he says, you are an Esther, a star that shines bright in the midst of darkness. The Lord says, but my word to you is I'm part the dark clouds and I'm removing the gray skies so the sunflower's face can look up. The Lord says, look up for this is the day of the Lord. Look up and you will find healing. Remember Acts chapter 3. A man was at the gate beautiful and the men of God said, look up. Silver and gold we have none but what we do have we give to you. The word do have is dunamis power. I hear the spirit of the Lord say, I'm releasing dunamis power. Look up and you will no longer... Feel the pain that you had. This is an hour of transformation, says the Spirit of God. Ah, something inside of me feels electric. Come here, camera guy. I like this guy. I remember him from the youth. I remember calling you out probably a year and a half ago in the youth room laying hands on you. But I heard the Spirit of God say, I am training you now in the prophetic. I am training you now through the eyes of a lens to see in a greater capacity. He says, you're learning the nuances of the prophetic as you go and zoom in, as you capture a moment. God says, that's what I'm doing for you prophetically. I'm gonna show you how to capture a moment. So when you see it, you'll know how to express it and release it. And it will be a picture that will become an image of beauty that others will see. And I will cause it to manifest out of your mouth and God says as you prophesy the word of the Lord will be good he says you will bring edification exhortation and encouragement you will prophesy a sure word of the Lord because you have a strong scripture foundation and out of the scriptures you will reveal revelation life and light and a generation will be changed God says son get ready because I've heard your cry and I'm sending it I'm sending my word to your family the Lord says this is a day a change for your family I reach in to the dark place and reveal a glorious light. Come on, say yes! Something's happening. And let me just calm down really quickly. Except I can't. You come here. You right there, yeah. What's your name? Rod? Nice to meet you, Rod. Look at that big hand. I feel tall, but I know I'm small next to you. But Rod, this is what I heard the Spirit of God say. Get ready for the love you wanted is about to embrace you. There was a time where you were pushed away and rejected. You felt alone, desperate, covered in darkness, and bitterness grabbed hold of your tongue. But I, the Lord, met you on the corner of spirit and truth, and I set you at liberty. And he said these words, I would make you a father. I heard the spirit of the Lord say, get ready, because you're about to help father a generation that feels unloved and is dealing with rejection. God says, I'm about to reach into your family line and deal with the fatherlessness that has been in your genealogy. But God says, I don't need many fathers. He said, I just need a father. And he says, if you would say yes to the mandate, he said, I would bring salvation to your family. He says, get ready, backyard barbecues are about to be invaded with the glory of God where family members become disgruntled and push on one another and become angry with words it's about to be destroyed for the word of the Lord is this I will use you to divide the walls of division and raise up walls of purity and words of holiness that would bring a generation unto Christ he said get ready your family is about to experience the love of my kingdom and this love will cover them and cloak them like a garment that will refresh them 
and cause their natures and ideas to be transformed into the ways of the kingdom. Hold out your hands. I'm going to hug you kind of aggressively. And when I do, you're going to feel an impartation of a fathering mental mantle come on you. You're going to feel a prophetic utterance come out of you because there is going to be a boldness. At times you have been called soft, but don't mistake softness for weakness or kindness for being a chump. You're not, but I'm going to release this apostolic prophetic mantle into your life that's going to give you the courage to say what's in your heart and set people at liberty. Hold that. I'm telling you, I can feel his goodness. I can feel his mercy. Come on, if you're hungry, say yes. If you want something from the Lord, cry out. This is your hour. This is your hour. This is your hour. See, God pours out to those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Is there any hungry or thirsty in this house? Come on, and so say, oh, yeah. Quickly, quickly. Just hold up your hands. Give me some space because I got to do something for him. What's your name real quick? Hi, Chris. I'm going to do something. I got to walk around you because God's putting you in the shamar. Shamar is a word for a hedge of protection, a fire. It, it, it's a place where you understand you're covered. I, I, I saw in the last season you got hit from many directions, but it, do you realize that the enemy only comes after those that are being effective? And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, I'm putting a fresh shamar, a fresh anointing over you. I'm covering you with fire because I have crowned you like Stephen. The Lord says your testimony will bring the souls of Tarsus under the kingdom because your language and your lifestyle will not change. The Lord says the word of the Lord to you is as you stand like Stephen did in faith, willing to take persecutions and even take the stone. He said, I would bring many unto Christ, the hardest of heart. The Lord says, those that are breathing threats and speaking words of condemnation, when they see your life and hear your words, something in them will bend and break. It may not be in that moment, but in a time preceding they will be changed. And then I will cause the voice of Ananias to come unto them and lay hands and open their eyes. The Lord says, Ananias is who you are. He says, you carry the word of grace and favor. And he says, and you will go to the souls of Tarsus, of people that have been blinded by religion. And when you open your mouth, favor and grace will set them free. He said, I've covered you for an hour, a day, and a time such as this to bring many into the kingdom. Just put your hands in the air, close your eyes. Something's happening. Shh, shh. Jesus. Jesus. His glory just stepped into the room. Jesus. Everything changes.
everything in your world is about to change. Your mind has been a mess. <laughs> I've seen you drifting when you're trying to stand your ground. Your mind has highs and then dark lows. But the Lord says today, I'm breaking the mindset. Put your head down. Put your head this way. Watch this. I'm going to give you a head, but I'm telling you what I'm going to do. But when I do, everything in your world is going to change. Your mind is going to shift in the pain and the fits of rage that you go into are going to be broken. I literally see you with your hands closed and your jaw tremoring and words of anger and poison come out. And you said, I'm sick of this. Jesus set me free. Make sense? Yes. Then do it. No surprises, I told him. When I came here, the Lord spoke to me and he said these words, who's feeding you? <clears throat> How many of you know you are a product of what you? The Bible says it's not what goes in a man that defiles him. It's what comes out of his mouth. I know this is going to sound gross, but burp, excuse me. A burp is usually a releasing of a gas from a food that you ate. And it never smells good. <clears throat> so what happens is there are some things that you eat that bloat you, don't feed you. <clears throat> so the question is, what are you eating? Did you realize that if I listen to you long enough, your words will tell me what's feeding you? The Bible teaches us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, that God framed the whole world by his word. Whatever he spoke became. And so what happens many times is we don't even realize when we're being defiled because it's subtle. When defilement begins to come, it begins to come and feed you like a dirty water fountain. You're thirsty, so you drink of it, but you don't realize you're drinking impurities. And so when you open your mouth, you're speaking what? What you partook of. And do you realize if you sit there and eat nothing but what the world is saying, you will begin to say what the world is declaring, no longer what heaven has proclaimed. I believe that God is getting ready to restore the ear of the kingdom unto each and every one of us. Don't you remember there was an hour when Peter was in the garden with Jesus. The betrayer came and kissed him and now Jesus is being arrested. Force is being used and Peter being like some of you, a little streetish began to manifest his gangsterism and began to do something. He reached into his sheath and pulled out his sword. There's many people that have been asking me in this hour, is it lawful for me to carry a gun? All I know is Peter was packing. He didn't go look for a gun. I mean, a sword. He didn't go look for a weapon. It was on him. And he what? He pulled it out and he wasn't afraid to use it. And when he pulled it out, what did he do? He swung it. But the question is, which way did he swing it? Most people think that he, he put it down, but it wouldn't be so because how would he take off an ear and not a shoulder? So that tells me that Peter wasn't swinging down. He was swinging across. He was swinging like a baseball bat to hit one. 
But what happened is Malchus, the servant of the high priest, did something. The anointing makes you slippery. Can I tell you that this man ducked, and what happened is the sword caught the edge of his ear, and it was sharp enough to take it off. And when it fell, Jesus immediately tells Peter, what? Put it away. This is not the hour of what? Fighting. And so he tells him, you live by the sword, you die by the sword, and Peter hosters the sword. And Jesus graciously, what does he do? He picks the ear off of the earth. Question is why? First, we got to understand what the name Malchus means. Malchus means kingdom. So the ear of the kingdom was taken off the priesthood. And it was on the earth floor. It was in the dirt of the earth. Don't you remember what it says in Genesis when God cursed Satan? He says, and you shall go on your belly all the days of your life and you shall eat the what? Dust of the earth. Can I tell you that when man has an ear to the floor, he's hearing what the enemy is saying, not what the heavens are proclaiming. So Jesus, what does he do? He picks the ear of the priesthood. And what does he do? He restores it. What ear was it? It wasn't the left ear, it was the right ear. So it means it's the ear of power, it's the ear of clarity, it's the ear that gives strength. And so Jesus restores it unto the man. Why? Because he was saying, I can't have a priesthood hearing what the world is saying. Do you understand that you're all royal priesthood? And you are a chosen generation of people that are set apart and all God wants you to do is to hear what the heavens are saying but if you spend more time listening to Fox, MSN and news media outlets how could you regurgitate what the heavens are saying you could only speak what feeds you so God began to ask me who's feeding you and so he took me to the man of fire Elijah the prophet and he told me three times I divinely fed him, I divinely fed him because I wanted to bring an understanding of what revival will look like. And I said, teach me. And he began to walk me through the scriptures found in 1 Samuel, excuse me, 1 Kings 17. We understand that Elijah the Tishbite shows up on the scene and he begins to prophesy, there shall be no dew or rain on the face of the earth except my, my word. So every time it needed to rain in an atmosphere, it couldn't rain on the earth and dew couldn't manifest. So every time it needed to rain, it had to shower on the inside of him because he had to become the container. Do you realize that you're a container of God's essence, of God's glory? And can I tell you that God has an appointed time for you to speak. And when you speak, it should be manna coming from heaven. It should be clear water flowing out of you that's attached to the throne room of God that flows out of you that's crystal clear so when you speak lives will be changed hearts will be touched and a world will be transformed and so God begins to use this man by the name of Elijah to prophesy a drought and then God tells him to do something he says turn eastward can I tell you why God said to the prophet turn eastward because eastward is where the sun rises can I tell you he was turning towards a new day? Do you realize that Christ is a new day? There needs to be a salvation and a sound and a cry that is being proclaimed and trumpeted in the earth and throughout this world and especially in America that a new day is coming. Everybody's talking about a new world and a new order. I'm talking about the kingdom of God invading the earth and bringing heaven and bringing a new sound. God's looking for you, Way World Outreach, to be a sound of God's kingdom, to be a demonstration of love that many lives would be changed and transformed by the power of salvation that he's placed in your mouth and so what happens is this God says to the prophet turn eastward and go by the brook Cherith when you study the word brook you will find out that the word brook means an inheritance so when he said go to the brook he said go dip yourself into the inheritance of God and so you're going to drink from this brook till it runs dry. He says, go to Cherith. Now, when you study the word Cherith, it means to cut or to separate. But it also means covenantal promise. Do you realize that the waters of this earth may run dry, but you have a covenant promise that God has cut with you? That covenant gives you the power to see your world change and transform. You don't live according to the ways of the world. You are just in the world, but you live according to the ways of his kingdom. So you're not blessed according to what the world can bless you with. You're blessed because you serve a king who honors his 
parents, his children. You're not servants. Can I tell you what you are? You're sons and daughters, and you're blessed by the Most High God. Who here wants to understand your sonship and identity that you might take and possess land and conquer and overcome? So in this hour, I see something. God says, I, I've commanded the raven to bring you bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. Two is the sign of a double portion. Two is a sign of a, a witness. What's being done in the heavens will be manifested in the earth. And so this raven, which is an unclean bird, that tells me that God was going to use the resources of the world to feed the prophet. Let me say it like this. God might use the government to supply for the church in this next hour. God might use the resources of the world to come and be a blessing. But the blessing is not from the world. The blessing is because God commanded it. I'm here to remind you that any any bit that comes into your hand it's been commanded by God but you got to understand who's feeding you because if you think it was the government providing for you something is wrong so the raven which is an unclean bird brought it day and night brought bread and meat what does bread speak of life what does meat speak of truth so this unclean bird was bringing truth and life but it was only appointed for a season and this is what's happened the church has decided some to stay away statistically they say 30 percent of the church will never come back well then my question is were they really the church because you know what i come to understand that when i'm a son i'm not leaving my father See, there's a whole lot of people leaving, but they're church people. I don't serve the church. I serve in the kingdom. And so there's a whole lot of people departing because they don't understand that they're the firstborn and they have a right to a double portion. So you're going to settle for what the world is offering because your ear is in the earth and you've never had it healed so you hear from the heavens. And you're settling for a lesser nature because when Adam fell, he fell because he ate from a tree called the tree of the knowledge of what? Good and evil. But did you know that God did not create you for what is good? If I was to ask you today, hey, if I could just offer you a little bit more, offer you a good life, would you take it? Absolutely. But that's because you don't understand what you were created for. On the sixth day, God created man. And when he looked over all of his creation, he declared it to be what? Very good. So let me ask you, if you were created for very good, would you settle for good? So when Adam was deceived, he ate from the tree of the lesser. He ate from the tree of good and evil. And when he ate from that tree... That was called the fall of man. The Bible says when he ate from it, his eyes of understanding were open to what is good. <laughs> that means that his eyes to what was very good, what he was created for, were closed. See, what's feeding you? When he ate from the tree instead of eating from the garden, when he ate from the one tree that was prohibited, he sacrificed everything that God gave him. Why are we sacrificing to set up for the lesser when God has given us the greater. Today, I want to challenge you to recognize who's feeding you. If it's the serpent, he's only going to give you what appears to be good. He's going to convince you that more is in it. But the truth is, there's a great loss. And so the raven came and fed him. But if he would have stayed there longer the thing that was feeding him and blessing him would have become his torment can i tell you if you are tormented in this hour it's because you've stayed at the brook when it's run dry and you've missed the command to go to Zarephath. you've missed the word to go to zidon you've missed that god has another provider for you you're trying to hold on to what no longer is when the brook ran dry the word of the lord was arise and go to Cherith. arise excuse me and go to Zarephath which is in Zidon and see I have commanded a widow there to provide the second feeding that comes to Elijah was now provided by the hand of a widow now we just got to dissect what is a widow a widow is one that lost her husband I could say it like this her old man died 
Now let's apply this. When you were born again, old things, old man, old nature, Adam passed away, your old man died, and behold, you were made a new creation in Christ Jesus, new man. Follow me. So now when this widow husband died, it was a sign that her old man died. The widow is a woman. It speaks of the church. Can I tell you, this church seemed like it had very little, but God doesn't care about how much you have. He cares about your willingness to feed. He cares about your willingness to serve. He cares about your desire for community. This widow was at the gate of the city, and what, she, what was she doing? She was gathering a few sticks that she might prepare her last meal for herself, her son, that they might eat it and what? Die. No future, no hope. So God sends her the prophet. Why? Because the prophet carries the word of a future. <laughs> and what does the prophet prophesy? He says these words. First, he says to the little widow who God has commanded to be a blessing. He says, uh, will you give me a glass of water? And she was willing. And then he said, will you bring me a morsel of bread to eat? And that was the straw that broke the camel's back. And she said, your maidservant does not have bread. I only have a handful of flour in a, in a jar and a little bit of oil in a vessel. And when I make this, I'm going to prepare it for myself and my son by gathering sticks. We're going to eat it and die. And the prophet hears what she says and says, don't worry, God's going to feed you. He said, listen to me. Go and do as you said. Mix your flour and your oil. What is flour? Broken down word of God. Flour makes bread, the word of God, the life of Christ. What is oil? Synonymous of the Holy Spirit. She said, your maidservant has nothing but a little bit of the Holy Spirit and the word in her life, and that is leading to death. She says, you don't understand that Holy Spirit and flour produces life. <laughs> But it's, it's not life to you because you see it as death, but put a little in my hand and let me tell you what I got. Can I tell you that he said, go do what you said, make me some from it first. The word first there is the Greek word proto. That word translates and means prototype. He said, let me have a portion that I can make a prototype. What is a prototype? The first of many to follow. Can I tell you when she gave the prophet the little bread, he blessed it after he ate it. And he said, hear the word of the Lord. Your bin of flour will not be used up and your jar of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends what? The rain. Well, where was the rain? locked up in him so can I tell you what he was doing that widow was in a drought she was in a famine he was raining on her oh you missed it you missed it the the heavens were shut up so the heavens were locked up in him and so when he opened his mouth he was raining on her just her nope her and her son and himself but not just her her son and himself he was raining on the community that she was attached to Hear me, hear me, hear me. I'm almost done. And watch what happens. This is so amazing. He said, the Lord will provide to, for you until he sends the rain. How long did it take to rain? Glad you looked. Book of James tells us three and a half years. So one seed provided for three and a half years. Say, hmm. Deuteronomy 1.11. God will bless you what? A thousand times. Can I tell you how many days of blessing came off of that one first fruit gift? 1,277 consecutive days of provision. Say it's raining. Say it's raining. You got to understand that the word was locked up. So when he said, until the day the Lord sends the rain, there is going to be provision in your house. It was enough to feed her, her son, and the prophet, and the community. Can I tell you that God is trying to raise somebody up in this house that will begin to take care of your four and many more. God wants you to be a voice of provision, a word that has the rain in it, the word of provision, the word that brings change. So the raven speaks of the world. The widow speaks of the church being a provider. But then finally the prophet 
gets a word and he's what? Overwhelmed with fear. A servant's head was cut off. And now after his great move where he defeated 450 prophets of Baal, there is an assignment of death on his life. He causes him to run for fear and he goes where? Into the wilderness and comes to a place and he says to a servant, stay here. And then he goes up under a tree and prays that he might what? Die. And he cries out and says, Lord, it's enough. How many of you have been crying? It's enough with this virus. It's enough with the news. It's enough with all of this craziness in the world. See, what we understand is, is this. If you listen to the way of the world, you're going to be overwhelmed by what the world is saying. But if you would listen to the ways of God, you would begin to understand what heaven is proclaiming. The Bible says where sin abounds, grace abounds more abundantly. This is not the darkest hour. It's the lightest hour. But it's a matter of where you are seated and how you see. It's a matter of who's feeding you. If you're eating from what the world is saying it's dark but if you're eating from what the heaven is proclaiming it is one of the shiniest hours because revival is about to break out who wants to be a part of this revival come on and so say yeah the last time that Elijah is fed the angel wakes him up and says arise and eat and he eats and he what drinks and goes back to sleep do you realize that God might stir you up, but because you're overwhelmed, the easiest thing to do is go to sleep. But see, rest is not a bad thing. It's actually the fourth commandment given to us. You know what the hardest thing to do is? Detach. We become so attached to so many things, we don't take a day. Not too long ago, I had a spiritual son come to my house when I was on my Sabbath, and he wanted to pray, and I wouldn't. He wanted to read and I couldn't because I was in my Sabbath. I was getting away. Honor the Lord of your Sabbath. You got to take a day of rest from TV, even from praying. I know that sounds crazy, but what happens is when you take that moment away, because if I pray, I get revelation and then I start writing sermons. But if I'm on a day of rest, I'm not supposed to be writing sermons. I'm supposed to be resting because resting doesn't just mean refreshing your soul. It means that you are positioning yourself for what God has next. See, the word rest doesn't just mean peace. The word rest means a portion that you did not know that God has allotted for you. The rest of a thing. God wants to give you more, but we aren't taking time to refresh. Now you understand why your pastor is on an assignment to get away. So when he comes back, he has what? A new portion to give to you. Someone say, yes. yes. All right, let me get ready to end because I'm running out of time and I'm ready to prophesy. So what happens is this. The prophet lays down and the angel comes a second time and says, arise and eat. He was fed an angel cake and drank the waters of heaven. And he went into the strength of that food for 40 days. Can I tell you what that food did? It caused him to run to Horeb where there was a mountaintop experience, but his experience wasn't the same as Moses. The wind, the earthquake, and the fire came, but God was not in any of it. Then the whisper. And when he heard the whisper, what did God do? He said, return by the wilderness of Damascus by which you came. And then he went and anointed somebody else. Can I tell you? When you eat what heaven feeds you, it gives you the power to return to the battle that you ran from. It gives you the power to anoint the next generation. I'm here to prophesy to this house, the Way World Outreach, get ready because you're about to go back into a battle. And when you go back into this battle, you're about to anoint the next generation to become mighty and victorious and overcome and bring a mighty move in this city and the surrounding cities of this nation. Who here is ready? to be part of a glorious move if so say yes close your bibles i'm done let me ask you this question who's been feeding you is it the raven the ways of the world what is unclean is it the church and not yourself or god See, we need the Spirit of God to feed us. And then we need the church to equip us. See, you know what we, the church has become in this last season? It's become an encouragement center. Because everybody is so overwhelmed, but the church has not been called to be an encouragement center. 
what's it been called for? The equipping of the saints to make ready leaders to take the world. I am so graciously grateful for your pastor who has an understanding of leadership training and equipping of the saints to what? Impact the world. Can I tell you that you're in a blessed house? You're in a fruitful house. You're in a prospering house. You're in a house that's making a difference. Come on, if you believe it, say yes. So who's feeding you today? When you understand where you're eating from, you'll understand how healthy you are. Come pray for you. Come here. I'm telling you. I'm going to pray for her, and then I want to ask this question. If you've been feasting on what the world and the news is saying, and you realize that you're regurgitating what others are saying instead of what the heavens are saying, and you feel like this is a difficult season, maybe you're lost, you're bound, or you're hurting. Maybe you have never said, Jesus, come into my life. But after hearing this message of who's feeding you, you're ready to be fed by Christ. If you are unsaved and would like to give your life to Jesus, I just want to ask you to stand on your feet. If you are far from Jesus and you would like to commit yourself yet again, I'm going to ask you to stand on your feet. And I'm going to ask this. Don't expect me to prophesy. Just expect to receive from heaven. Amen? Because some people will come up just hoping to get a word. And that wasn't what we're asking. If you are lost, hurting, bound, your heart is overwhelmed, you're filled with anxiety, you can't breathe, and you feel like giving up on life, today's your day. That the Lord will touch you. He'll heal you. He'll deliver you and set you free. This is what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say. He said, I'm about to turn everything around. You've been in a season where life hasn't been easy, nor has it been fun. And you hear this scripture, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And you're like, Lord, I love you with all my heart, but I don't have joy. Did you know that joy is the fruit of the spirit? And what you've had is fleeting happiness. So your life has been like a yo-yo. But you know what I saw God do? Cut the string. And he says, you will not be puppeted anymore. I heard the Lord say, I'm about to invade you in your room, and I'm about to change what you are writing, and I'm going to cause you to begin to write words of a future and a hope. I saw you not long ago weeping in your room, and then you went into the bathroom to kind of catch your breath, and I saw you go, and you looked at yourself, and for a moment, this is what you did. You smiled, and then the smile went away, and tears came. And you're like, what? You said these words almost. I try to force myself to smile. The Lord said, that wasn't you. That was me. And he said, I smiled at you for a moment to let you know I'm alive on the inside of you. He said, I smiled at you, but you allowed your emotions to overwhelm you. See, but God says, I'm about to whisper. You're healing. The word whisper means a voice with no bass tones. A bass instrument is not one that you hear. It's one that you feel. You know what's been out of whack? Your feelings. So the reason I'm whispering is because God's removing you from your feelings into the knowing that he is with you. He smiled at you. A new day has come and you're about to be from anxiety, from panic, from worry and fear. And you're about to come to the place where his joy is made perfect. Lift up your hands. Stretch your hands towards her. Jesus, as I lay my hand on her head, may she be overwhelmed with your glory. Ah. I feel the fire of God. I feel the presence. I know that there are some nursery workers and stuff. If we want to release them, and I don't have to leave. I don't have to finish. But is there any instructions that you could give me? Okay. 
So if the nursery workers want to bring the kids in, I don't have a problem with young people. I understand movement. I love people. And I just want to take my time because I'm here to pour out. If you have to leave, just want to make mention that we have a new book, new book that just came out, published by Destiny Image, Discovering and Releasing Your Prophetic Voice. It's, can you grab that one for me, Sam? Or, yep, so this is it. There's limited copies on the back, but you could always find it on Amazon. Just look up my name, Rob Sanchez, and it'll take you right to the link. It's called Discovering and Releasing Your Prophetic Voice. This is a 20-year journey of me releasing and expounding the prophetic in my life. I'm telling you, there's crazy stories that will radically transform the way you think. And so we just want to let you know that that's available to you. But I just want to let you know that I'm going to keep ministering because it's in my heart. I'm just going to walk back this way because I feel the pool. Can I pray for you with a cool beard? Yeah. Someday, I might be able to grow something like that. It might take me 10 years because I don't grow. Look, look at my arms. No hair. I'm like a bald chihuahua for reals. It's sad. People ask me when they look at my legs, do you shave your legs? I tell them yes, but I don't. It just don't grow. Anyway, sorry. But what's your name? I like you, Zach. <clears throat> This is what I heard the Spirit of God say. I'm about to use you in a dimension you never thought possible. You have thrown down different tools and giftings that you have because you thought, could God use a man such as me? And God says, it's time to pick up your giftings. You're very creative with your hands. <clears throat> you could take something apart and put it back together and not use directions you're a builder by nature you're a scientist a solver of problems and God says I'm about to visit you with the word of wisdom the word of wisdom is different than the word of knowledge the word of knowledge gives information the word of wisdom is an answer to a problem God says you are a second king's chapter 2 verse 19 man Elijah was called upon and he said bring me a new bowl put salt in it and then he went to the source of the problem cast salt in there and it was healed God says I'm going to sprinkle you into places where there's problem because you'll have the wisdom to fix it you'll turn bittersweet and you'll cause dead things to come to life God says Zach get ready because I'm going to cause your tongue to flourish in this season and he says, you don't see it. There is a fragrance that's going to come out of you that's going to bring many to Christ. And he says, you're going to bring healing to people that are atheists. You're going to bring deliverance to people that said, I tried God, but he wasn't for me. You're going to minister to the angry and the hard-hearted. And you're going to share your testimony. And you're going to scribe in their heart the word of God. And when you scribe in their heart, the ways of God, the veil will be removed and their eyes will be open and their heart will see the glory of a king. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, get ready because I am touching you with fire this day and this fire will not go away. I just released the fire of God ha! into your spirit from this day forward. He wasn't expecting that. There is a fresh fire that's blowing in here. There is a move where things are getting crazy. What's your name? Come here. Just jump down. I like this guy. <clears throat> I just want you to hold your hands up. The glory of God's going to come on you. Jalen, you're a soul winner. You're more than a singer. You're an inspiration. You encourage so many people. I just heard the Lord say these words. Your tongue will drip honey. 
and the countenance of the brokenhearted will be lifted up. He said, the word that comes out of your mouth in the spirit of prophecy will bring life and hope. You know there's a prophetic anointing on you, but you're afraid of it because you have said, I don't want to be wrong. But the Lord says, if you minister the scriptures into the lives of a people, you'll never be wrong. He says, you'll encourage, set at liberty, and bring the captive into freedom by the word that I placed in your mouth. And God says, I have been putting songs in your heart to write. And you're like, not me, I'm not a writer. God says, who are you to say to me what I can and can't pull forth from my vessel? He says, this day know that when you go home tonight, I will stir you. About 3 o'clock in the morning, I see you wide awake. And God says, I will begin to fill you with words and you will write them down. And some will be in a rhythmic rap form. Others will be just places where there are riffs and melodies. And he says, get ready to pick up instruments. Get ready to pick up other devices. I, I don't know why, but I even see you making beats. And God says, I'm going to use all of these sounds that are hidden in you to reach a generation. I just release this impartation. I feel fire in my hands. So if you're here and you have not given your life to Jesus and you would like to surrender, this would be a great time. You know what I heard the Spirit of God say? I'm going to rename this altar. He said, I'm going to rename this altar. And he says, I'm going to call it Besor. Besor in Hebrew means good news. In 1 Samuel 30, David's men came to Besor. It was a brook. And they went there and washed. And when they crossed over, that's when they found the Egyptian that was thrown away. And David and his men gave him raisin cakes. Raisins are made from grapes. Cakes are made out of bread. If you look at those two elements, it's bread and wine. They gave him communion and a dying man revived. God is going to use this altar called good news to feed people that are in death, in sin, raisin cakes, fig cakes, communion. And when they have fellowship here on this altar, they are going to become pointers to where your spoil and harvest is. And many will be saved. And great will be the harvest. I hear the Lord saying, this altar has been called the altar of Besor. Good news where the gospel is preached, where lives are healed, and uh, mindsets are changed and bodies are transformed for the glory of my kingdom, says the Lord. What a word. My God. So if there's no one that wants to get saved, that's fine. Can I pray for you? Come here, quickly. If you want to rededicate or you've never dedicated, just come quickly. Just come to the altar. <clears throat> but I'm going to be prophesying right now to this young lady. And then I'll come and pray for you. What's your name? What's your name? Lexus? Like the car? Okay. I know I'm making you nervous. But don't worry, I don't bite. And the word out of my mouth encourages. But Lexus, this is what I heard the Spirit of God say. I want to remove fear from your life. And I want the wall that you've built up to protect yourself to fall. Because it's keeping you from crossing into everything that I have. And I heard the Lord say, if you would allow me, Lexus... I would bring healing, not only to your heart, but to your mind. Because your mind at times wanders and gets overwhelmed and it doesn't shut off. And I see that you're in need of great sleep. And you feel exhausted and you can't rest. But the Lord says, my promise to you is I give my beloved 
sweet rest. And I stay awake so you can find peace. He says, tonight I'm going to remove the fear. And you know how you feel that thing in the back of your head at times? And it, the minute you feel that, you can't explain what it is, but it's a feeling. It's almost like a tickle or a feather gets brushed upon your body and you're like, and you're overwhelmed. And it doesn't just happen at your house. It's happened when you've gone places to your other friends and you're like, what is this? You know what it is? It's a lie from the pit of hell. And I'm telling you, God wants to set you free. says and I'm going to bring you out of your shell and you're going to trust people because you're ready to be loved you know what the hardest thing for you to do is get close to anyone look at me right here I stand in proxy for men that have been unkind to you. Look at me. And I ask, will you forgive me? You know what you need? You need a father's kiss. The word kiss in Hebrew is the word nesak. It means to dress someone to overcome their spiritual battles. You know what a father is supposed to do? He's supposed to kiss the head of his children because he's affirming them. When the prodigal son in Luke 15 was coming home, the father ran out to him, fell on his neck, broke the yoke of sin, then kissed him. Then he said, bring out my best robe. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. He dressed him to overcome. That's what God wants to do for you. Would you give me the honor? as a sign from heaven to your earthly being on the top of your head to give you a kiss. You're gonna feel true love hit your body. And when this love hits you, you'll get weak in your knees. You know how they say, when you find true love, it makes you weak in it. That's what's gonna happen. But this is a love that can't come from a man. It comes from your father. Would you like that? Father, as Lexus is so willing to receive from you, let her world change. All right. Making me cry. Well up on the inside, man. I'm telling you. is getting hit. Just stand up. Stand up. The glory's coming on her. Stand up quickly, quickly, quickly. Just raise up your hands. Holy Spirit, consume her. Let her feel your kiss. <sighs> Something's happening. <sighs> For those that came to dedicate their life, just come up here real quick. 
Welcome to the kingdom. Welcome to the kingdom of God. All right. For all of you that are coming up here to receive, just put your hands up. Father, for every son, for every daughter that came to say yes, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would move in a mighty way, that you would bring forth change and transformation. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're coming into the lives of those here. As I say a corporate prayer and they get prayed for individually, let their world change. I thank you for your great love. Go ahead, workers, do your work. I'm just going to keep stepping into this because I just feel like, God, I wish I had another day or two because there's something so glorious sitting right here. There's a dude way in the back with the goatee, shaved head. Can I pray for you? Let me go get him. Because there's like, everybody's like, that's half the church. But you have the 21 on your shirt. What's your name? What's your name? Mike. Did you know that the number 21 speaks of the number of faith? Did you know that? Yeah. So faith is going to come all over you right now. Your world is about to be changed. Prophet Rob's going to continue ministering. He's still ministering. You love God. If you have to pick up your kids, you can pick up but your children. You can come to right back. He's going to continue what God's ministering. Love will do through you. He told me he'll be here all night to pray for each person. You're going to experience. That's what it takes. But I do want to honor Kids World to the ask children. That you've never you can felt. pick up your kids. You're going to feel a fire run through your body, and everything in your life is going to feel complete for the first time. Can I tell you, you're serving God, but there's still some things that feel incomplete. You love God, but some things aren't feeling right. But God says, I'm more than a feeling. I'm bringing you to the place of the knowing. And he says, the reason I called you out is because I want you to know how much I love you. See, because you've doubted. Even with the prophetic, it's like, yeah, you know. And then he called you, and you're like, what? You know? I see it. It's all right. But you know what God's going to do? He's going to fill your heart with so much love that you're going to witness to your family and your days of loss I just see some people in the heavens and you still cry over it no one knows you're a big cry baby but you do it by yourself nobody knows I see tears running down your eyes and when God touches you like he's touching you now you're like God how could I not but I heard these words come from heaven they say, you've been equipped to be a destroyer of darkness. Fight the fight. Somebody close to you that told you you would be a somebody is shouting in the heavens saying, you are that man. Close your eyes. Something's about to happen. I'm going to tap your heart, but you're going to feel like a sledgehammer hits you. Holy Spirit, touch him. Did you expect that? Uh -uh. You see your whole body shook. You know what I saw? Walls break. Love is what God poured over you. Ah, Jesus, Jesus. My goodness. I swear I just feel like walking through the crowd like this. What's your name? Brian. I like you. Jesus loves you. All these young guys by you, they listen to you. You know why? Because the word in your mouth is good and you're full of love. You carry a Jonathan sword. Jonathan's name means the gift of God. But the sword of Jonathan was dipped into honey. And when he put it to his face and ate of it, his countenance was bright. And I heard the Spirit of God say, you will be a countenance brightener you will share God's word into the heart of a people and they will suddenly begin to see 
how good I am. For under your tongue flows milk and honey, for you carry the promised person. And as you share of me, the lives of a young men and women will be enlightened and their hearts will be changed and the worlds will be transformed by the power of essence that you carry. He says, you are one filled with love. He said, son, get ready. The love that I placed in you will flow out of you over a generation and it will cause them to rise up and be strong. For many people said this generation will not make it because of the temptations, but you are of a different opinion. You said this generation will be mighty as long as we teach them. God says, I put a teacher's mantle upon you to equip this generation with love, and I'm filling you with an essence. He said, I'm putting a burden deep within your heart right now. And he says, this burden will burn that lives of this generation would be touched with the kingdom feel all that pressure that's going to build up in your heart and it's going to explode through your mouth and your mouth will be like a hydrant to put out the fires of the world and release the glory of a kingdom i bless you in the name of the lord ah, jesus jesus he's so good I, I, I can't help it man i can't you love jesus yeah. He's like, what? Out of all the people, why are you stopping here? He's about to get it. See, look. Here, stand up real quick. What's your name? Caden. Grab my hand. Father, I impart life. I impart transformation. I impart spirit and hope. I awaken dreams and visions, but I awaken tenacity that he would go after it. Lord, I stir the gift of God that is in him, and I say, remember the call that is on you. Pursue the destiny that I've set in you, for surely my strength is the portion I impart. <laughs> He's a good young man. Jesus, my goodness. How am I, Pastor? I'm okay? Okay, I'm good. As long as he says I'm good, I'm going to keep going. I'm telling you. Jesus is the real deal. There's something that is so active in this atmosphere that God is trying to stir the prophetic in your lives because when we begin to testify of Jesus, Revelation 19.10, the testimony of the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy, and when it goes out, lives are changed forever. And I'm looking at some people that are so hungry for the things of God that when some people get the fill, they leave. But when you're hungry, you become like Joshua, the son of Nun, who does not depart the tabernacle. Why? Because he understood that there was an assignment that was yet to come. And he became the next leader over all of Israel. I just sense that God's ready to anoint some people for what is next. This young lady, she's clapping her hands back here with the pink and the black. Can I pray for you right there? Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Quickly, 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 quickly. Come out. <laughs> I heard the Lord say, you're turning the corner. To a brand new day he said I don't know why but I saw your dogs are barking meaning your feet hurt your legs hurt but I heard the Lord say I'm gonna take the pain and I'm gonna cause the inflammation and the swelling that you've been experiencing to be gone and the Lord says don't worry I have everything within the pressure of your body under control and he says, and I'm going to bring everything into balance. And I heard the Spirit of God say, get ready for an outpouring of glory in your house. I'm about to cause the noise and the chaos to go away. I'm going to take your stress level that's been...